So after going through the process in finding the equation of the tangent plane to a surface at a given point, we are going to learn how to use this tangent plane to approximate multivariable functions at a given point. So assuming that we have a function f of x, y, and this function is said to be a differentiable function, then the linearization of the function at the point x0, y0 is given by the function L of x, y, and that is equal to f of x0, y0, plus fx of x0, y0, times x minus x0, plus fy of x0, y0, times y minus y0. Now, fx of x0, y0 represents the partial derivative of the function with respect to x at the point x0, y0, and then fy of x0, y0 also represents the partial derivative of the function with respect to y at the point x0, y0. Now, the linearization of the function at the point x0, y0, which is giving us L of x, y is said to be equal to z. Now, this z represents the equation of the tangent plane. So, in actual sense, we can say that the linearization of a function f of x, y at the point x0, y0 is equal to what we call the tangent plane approximation. So, this is called the tangent plane approximation. Now, in addition to that, the linear approximation of the function at the point x0, y0 is said to be nearly equal to the linearization of the function at the point x0, y0. Now, since the linear approximation, so this is called linear approximation, linear approximation, and then this is called the linearization linearization so since the linear approximation of the function at the point x0 y0 is nearly equal to the linearization of the function we basically use the two interchangeably so you can either be asked to find the linearization of the function or better still the linear approximation of the function at a given point now we have a question here question one we are going to find the linearization or in other words the linear approximation of the function at a point 72 and we are going to use that to approximate f of 6.9 comma 2.06 so let's try to solve this question together so we know that the linear approximation or better still the linearization of a function f of x y is given by this function and so we have the linearization of x y to be equal to now first of all we need to find the value of the function at the point x not y not the partial derivative of the function with respect to x and then we find the value of this function at the point x not y not and then we do same for f y so first of all we, we want to find the value of the function at the point x not y not so the value of the function at the point x0, y0, and that is equal to f of. So here we have x0 to be 7, and then we have y0 to be 2. Okay. So for x0, that is 7, y0 is 2, so that is equal to, using this function, we have ln of, 7 minus 3 times 2 and that's equal to ln of 1 now ln of 1 is equal to 0 so we have the value of the function at the point x0 y0 or 7 2 to be equal to 0 now let's let's try to find the partial derivative of the function with respect to x so that is equal to so we are going to differentiate this inside function with respect to x we differentiate x we have 1 and then this is a constant so it goes to zero so divided by we are going to repeat the inside function so x minus 3y and therefore 
if you want to find fx at the point 72 that is equal to 1 over 7 minus 3 times 2 and that is equal to 1 over 1 and that is equal to 1 next we move on to fy partial derivative of the function with respect to y so we are going to differentiate the inside function with respect to y we differentiate x it goes to 0 we differentiate negative 3y we have negative 3 all divided by we are going to repeat the inside function and then for fy of 7 2 we have negative 3 divided by 7 minus 3 times 2 that becomes negative 3 over 1 and that is equal to negative 3 so we have this to be negative 3 so we are going to plug these values into this function so we have the linearization of the function to be equal to f of x naught y naught which is equal to 0 so we have 0 plus fx of x naught y naught which is equal to 1 so we have 1 times x minus x naught is 7 and then plus fy of x naught y naught and that is equal to negative 3 so we have negative 3 and then times y minus y naught which is 2 let's try to expand and simplify so we are going to have x minus 7 that is when we multiply 1 across and then this becomes negative 3y plus 6 so thus we have x minus 3y negative 7 plus 6 that is negative 1 that is negative 1 so we have the linearization of the function at the point x naught y naught which is 7 2 to be equal to x minus 3 y minus 1 so this is the linearization of the function at the point 7 2 now let's try to find so basically we are going to use this linearization to approximate f of 6.9, 2.06. So we are going to substitute we are going to substitute 6.9 for x and then 2.06 for y. So here we have we are going to have l of 6.9, 2.06 and that is equal to we have 6.9 minus 3 times 2.06 and then minus 1 so we are going to punch this whole thing into the calculator and basically that's going to give us negative 0 0.28 so this is negative 0 0.28 so basically this is the approximated value okay this is the approximated value so this is the approximated value so basically this is our answer after estimating f of or trying to approximate f of 6.9 comma 2.06 this is the value we are looking at negative 0 0.28 now, as a matter of fact, we want to know how this approximated value deviates from the original value. Okay, so let's try to find the original value. Now, for the original value, we are going to plug 6.9, 2.06 respectively in place of x and y into the original function given. So, we have f of 6.9, 2.06. 06 okay and that will be equal to we have ln of 6.9 minus 3 times 2.06 so when you subtract 3 times 2.06 from 6.9 then you have you have 0 0.72 therefore ln of 0 0.72 is equal to 
negative 0 0.3285 that is if you want to correct two four decimal places so this is the value of the function at the point 6.9 2.06 so this is the original value this is the original value or the actual value the original or the actual value so basically when you compare these two values when you compare these two values you realize that the approximated value is slightly bigger than the original value now we are talking about negative values so this is slightly bigger than that hence you are able to appreciate the error between the two values so this is the approximated value and this is what we are actually looking for however we want to see how the approximated value deviates from the original value so that's it for today's video thanks for watching and see you in my next video bye bye